we shall discuss instrumentation technique and block diagram of raman spectroscopy raman spectrometers are used to analyze materials by shining a laser on them and analyzing the scattered light raman spectroscopy is used in chemistry to identify molecules and study the chemical bonding it can also be used to analyze the drugs of abuse and other illicit substances raman spectroscopy is a non destructive chemical analysis technique which provides detailed information about the chemical structure phase polymorphy crystallinity and molecular interaction it is based upon the interaction of light with the chemical bond bonds within the material raman is a light scattering technique whereby a molecule scatters incident light from a high intensity laser light source most of the scattered light is at the same wavelength as the laser source and does not provide useful information and this is called the raleigh scatter however a small amount of light is scattered at different wavelengths which depend on the chemical structure of the substance this is called the raman scatter raman scattering is a spectroscopy technique that is complementary to infrared absorption spectroscopy the technique involves shining a monochromatic light source that is laser on a sample and detecting the scattered light the majority of the light scattered light will pass through the sample without interaction the result is the detector will receive the energy which is of the same frequency as the excitation source this is known as raleigh or elastic scattering a very small amount of the scattered light around 1 in 10 power 7 is shifted in energy from the laser frequency this shift is known as raman shift or stoke shift this is inelastic scattering at room temperature the anti stokes shifted raman energy is weaker than the stokes shifted energy thus they are usually ignored and removed by filters and here is the picture which shows the raleigh scattering and the raman scattering so raleigh scattering is the elastic scattering and raman scattering which is uh, the center picture center line and the right line which is nothing but inelastic scattering so if light shines on the material and we have uh, the transition from ground state to one of the virtual states here and these lines v1 v2 vn are called rotational or vibrational energy levels and raleigh scattering which is elastic scattering and this line upper transition goes to virtual state and from virtual state to the same same place it comes down whereas here it does stoke scattering and it goes to the virtual state whereas from the virtual state it jumps to any one of the rotational or vibrational levels here so inelastic scattering similarly it starts from any one of the rotational level and goes to the virtual state it absorbs and when it comes to the ground state again it is inelastic scattering so this will be stokes scattering and anti stokes scattering or raman lines and raleigh scattering in which we have elastic scattering takes place this is due to interactions between the incident electromagnetic waves and the vibrational energy levels of the molecules in the sample in other words the interaction can be viewed as a perturbation of the molecules electric field instrumentation technique and block diagram instrumentation for modern raman spectroscopy consists of the following components laser source sample illumination system lens monochromator detector and the recorder and this is the block diagram of raman spectrometer here the source is nothing but the laser so we have a laser here with a low frequency in order to reduce the fluorescence on the sample the lens l1 so this is our lens l1 focuses the light 
on to the sample so sample is here the sample is illuminated and scattered light is collected by the lens to for dispersion and here the geometry of the sample is seen right below okay the light comes from the lens one so we have lens one falls on the sample due to the concave mirrors m1 and m2 light is reflects back and falls on the sample and it scatters and falls on lens 2 and more focus light on the dispersive system so we have with the different wavelength that will fall on the dispersive system that is different wavelength of the light will fall on the monochromatic in which either uh, gratings will be there or prisms will be there or one or more gratings will be there our from the dispersive system we have a single narrow wavelength will come out from the monochromator and falls on the detective device it passes through the photo multiplier and the output of the multiplier is amplified and it is recorded and we have the raman spectrum laser source the source used in modern spectroscopy is very narrow highly coherent monochromatic laser beam because their high intensity is necessary to produce raman scattering of sufficient intensity to be measured with a reasonable signal to noise ratio because the intensity of raman scattering varies as a, as the pore power of the frequency argon and krypton ion sources that emit the blue and green region of the spectrum have an advantage over the other sources lasers which are highly monochromatic coherent beam they are extremely powerful for example rare gas lasers argon krypton and so on which can provide intensities as great as 1 million times that of sunlight previous raman measurements were taken with mercury arc earlier sample illumination system the sample is placed in narrow glass or in a quartz tube the sample of raman spectroscopy may be solids liquids or gases solid samples raman spectra of solid samples are often acquired by filling a small cavity with a sample after it has been ground to a fine powder polymers can usually be examined directly with no sample pre treatment liquid samples the major advantage of the handling in raman spectroscopy compared with infrared arrays is because water is a weak raman scatterer but a strong absorber of infrared radiation thus aqueous solutions can be studied by raman spectroscopy this advantage is particularly important for biological and inorganic systems and in studies dealing with water pollution problems gas samples gases are normally kept in glass tubes having the dimension 1 to 2 cm in diameter and about 1 mm thick gases can also be sealed in small capillary tubes lens light scattered sideways from the sample is collected by lens and passed into a grating monochromator similar to a digestive infrared instrument raman spectrometer the design of raman spectrometer is similar to the classical ultraviolet visible dispersing instruments most employed double grating systems to minimize the spurious radiation reaching the transducer photo multipliers serve as transducers the photo multiplier measures the sensitive signals nowadays raman spectrometers are marked marketed either fourier transform instruments equipped with the cooled germanium transducers or multi channel instruments based upon charge coupled devices after amplification it is usually processed by a computer which plots the required raman spectrum working laser is almost the ideal as a source for raman experiment it gives a narrow highly monochromatic coherent beam which can be focused very finely into a small sample in addition lasers can be extremely powerful ranging from milliwatts to several watts concentrated into a small energy spread the laser beam is passed through a cell 
usually in a narrow glass or quartz tube filled with a sample. Light scattered sideways from the sample is collected by a lens and passed into the grating monochromator, similar to that used in dispersive infrared instrument. The signal is measured by a sensitive photomultiplier and after amplification, it is usually processed by a computer which plots the Raman spectrum. The use of plain polarized radiation gives information about the symmetries of molecular vibrations. To make these measurements, the laser beam is plane polarized perpendicular to the plane of the paper and a polarizing filter is placed between the sample and the collecting lens. The Raman spectrum is then measured twice, first with the polarizing filter which is said to pass light polarized perpendicular to the paper and then right angle to this. The ratio of the two signals for each Raman line is a measure of degree of polarization of that line. For vibration measurements, the Raman technique has several advantages over infrared spectroscopy. FTR spectroscopy brings out the fact of changes in dipole moments, whereas the Raman spectrum gives the changes in the molecular bond polarizability. The interaction of light with a molecule can induce a deformation of its electron cloud. This deformation is known as a change in polarizability. Molecular bonds have specific energy transitions in which a change in polarizability occurs, giving rise to common active modes. As an example, molecules that contain bonds between the homonuclear atoms such as carbon-carbon, sulfur-sulfur and nitrogen-nitrogen bonds undergo a change in polarizability when photons interact with them. These are the examples of bonds that give rise to Raman active spectral bands but would not be seen difficult to see in FTAR. Because Raman effect is an inherently weak effect, the optical components of a Raman spectrometer must be well matched and optimized. Also, since organic molecules may have a great, greater tendency to fluorescence when short wavelength radiation is used, longer wavelength monochromatic excitation sources such as solid state laser diodes having light at 785 nanometer are typically used. Advantages Firstly, because the incident and the scatter radiation are at ultraviolet or visible frequency, conventional optics and same cells, for example, glass and quartz, etc., can be used in order to avoid the problems with the NACL windows, atmospheric absorption, and so on. Secondly, because the beam can be focused extremely finely diameter as small as 0.1 nanometer are possible. Very small samples can be studied. This combined with the pulsed techniques which can give very short time resolutions, enable very small quantities to transient species to be studied. Thirdly, water, which has strong infrared absorptions, is rather a weak Raman scatterer and, and so aqueous solutions can be studied using Raman spectroscopy. Using the sample signal is not swamped by that of the solvent. These reasons collectively ensure that Raman spectroscopy is particularly well suited to the study of biological systems. For example, it can be used in the studies of spectrum of myoglobin. In addition to the liquids and solutions, Raman spectra can be obtained from gas and solid samples. In the case of gases, multiple reflection techniques are sometimes adopted in which the laser beam is reflected several times back and forth through the sample in order to enhance the signals. No need for nitrogen purging of the optical bench, water and carbon dioxide vapors are very weak scattering species. Cheap sample holders, inexpensive glass sample holders are ideal in most cases. Cleaner spectra, Raman spectra are cleaner than mid IR spectra. Raman bands are narrower and overtone and the combination bands are generally weak. 
wide range of molecules can be investigated the standard spectral range reaches well below 400 per centimeter making the technique ideal for both organic and inorganic species it can be investigated for weak ir bands raman spectroscopy can be used to measure bands of symmetric linkages which are weak in an infrared spectrum such as c double bond with c c is and s single bond with s disadvantages one of the major problems with some raman samples particularly if they are colored is that the heat generated by the intense focused laser beam may cause decomposition due to low raman intensities the detector sensitivity is paramount another problem which sometimes arises is that of sample fluorescence such radiation can totally swamp the weak raman signal however the instrumentation of raman spectrum is more expensive than typical mid range infrared spectroscopy laser can destroy sections of the sample if the power setting is too high fluorescence caused by the laser is a major concern with some samples raman analysis is primarily surface sensitive due to the limited depth of penetration of the laser light raman spectroscopy does not suitable for analyzing metals and alloys